Hi everyone, Rina here with a real review of this Squire Affinity Telecaster 2021 model in Lake Placid Blue. It's beautiful. It was quite a ride because I had to return two copies of this particular model until I found a copy with no build quality issues that were noticeable while playing. And this led me to have a pretty good overview about all the issues that this particular model could have and you should watch out for them. Okay, so what's new in 2021? This model compared to the 2020 version has split shaft tuners, which ought to be a, a bit better than the old ones, a glossy headstock, a synthetic bone nut with a width of 42 millimeters. I think that could be a big one for some of you. Also, we have a belly cut and finally a string through body bridge for all of the guitars. The last thing to mention is that the body is thinner again, like the previous models. So this is about half a centimeter thinner than the Fender Telecasters. My first impression of this guitar was not particularly positive. You can check out my unboxing video right here. This one is the third guitar which has been checked and set up and has polished frets by the people at Toman who did that for free because I already returned a guitar. We will talk about the build quality in a second, but let's talk about the playability. The setup of all three guitars I had in my hands here were good, it was okay, but I suggest you to do a really well setup yourself the first time you're changing the strings. You can check out this playlist, how to do it, um, on a Affinity Telecaster. What I like about this neck is that it it is slim, it plays fast for me. I wear safety gloves with a size 8, maybe this is a reference you can relate to. I've often heard that people with bigger hands don't like this slimmer neck profile and I would really like to know what your experience in the matter is, so please let me know in the comments below. The bridge is another plus because the more modern type bridges don't have screws massively sticking out here. So when you rest your hand here in order to play palm mutes, you don't have any screw poking your here, which is uncomfortable. In addition to that, it's also more convenient to set up because you have individual saddles that can be adjusted in any direction and that's a plus too. Another thing to mention is the acoustic sound. Of course, we don't buy electric guitars because of the acoustic sound, but especially for beginners, you don't start with massive tube amp stacks and, and whatnot. You, you sometimes need to practice without an amplifier. And if it sounds nice, it's a plus. I think it has something to do with these um, string through body capsules because in the older model, the 2020, which was a top loader, which means that the strings run through here and not through the whole body, the acoustic sound was a lot less interesting. The tuners work quite well. It's easy to tune this guitar up and I think that the tuning stability in comparison to the older model has improved. The nut, of course, plays an important role here, too. I do have to say, though, that, that these feel a little cheap in the hand. Ultimately, this has nothing to do with the sound you will get out of this guitar, so I think it's, it's not so bad. And if you mind it, of course, you can always go here and, and change them. Changes like this, modifications will be a big subject in the upcoming weeks, so if you don't want to miss them, Please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Thanks. On to the big subject of the build quality. The first guitar had a big sending spot right here and I could feel it every time I was playing open chords. And this was bothersome. The second one had a deep gash somewhere in this area where I would play solos. And 
This led me to the decision to return them. At this price tag, you, you shouldn't expect a guitar that has been polished very smoothly on the back of the neck, but you don't want sanding spots or, or gashes here because you will notice them every time you play. Also, the second guitar had a misaligned bridge and I always had the feeling that the string was about to run off the edge here and that's not something you feel comfortable with. This guitar has misaligned strings as well. I can show you. The strings run towards this side, but on this guitar it's not the bridge that is causing this problem, it's the placement of the neck in the neck pocket. This is something I want to fix and even if I didn't, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. So, if you don't want to mess around with any of this, make sure in a shop or something like that, that this is good. Also, if you dare use power tools, I mean, not the expensive stuff, but the regular stuff most people will have at their homes, like me, we will fix this in another video. The optical imperfections, which I have seen, are really carelessly screwed in screws on the pig guard. I had a glue residue on the fretboard, also glue residues where you can adjust the truss rod. Of course, slightly misaligned capsules for the string through body bridge, a misaligned neck plate and something that is even visible on the Fender homepage itself, if you look closely, are that the dots on the face side of the neck are not aligned 100% correct. Is this a problem? I think no and this is absolutely to be expected in a guitar at that price range. These are no reasons, at least in my opinion, to return a guitar. It's things that bother you while playing. The neck is a bit rougher than other guitars in the price range and even than the last year's model. The fret ends were filed nicely and they were in all three copies. Something that the other copies without a special treatment had are of course unpolished frets. This is the first guitar with a laurel fretboard that I have and I have to say that it feels really nice. Also I like the texture. You have to keep in mind though that the other two copies I received of this guitar had a little dry fretboard. This one is different because the service person at Toman took their time to oil it before sending it to me. All in all, I think that the chrome plating has improved. This bridge looks, I think, pretty neatly. Especially in contrast to the last year's model that had some kind of a hazy look to it. One other thing to mention is that the quality of the joint between the neck and the body is kind of crucial for sustain and, and things like that. And in boutique guitars, they take really a long time to make this fit perfect. Let's see how well they did on this guitar. This is actually not bad and I think it's a good start to make some improvements on the neck pocket, which will be something we tackled in upcoming episodes. Last but not least is the sturdiness of the neck, which I always test with this procedure. Okay, this is all my pinky can handle and this is a sturdy, well-built neck. The body of this guitar, I think, is really, really beautiful. The color is so nice. I really like the Lake Placid Blue. It's one of my favorite Fender colors. And you should expect teeny tiny spots somewhere in the finish, but no one will ever see them, except from you if you look with a magnifying lens on them. One of the guitars had a tiny dent in here, which again was only visible in the right light. Let's check out my scale, because I've weighed all three copies of the guitar. And you can see that they are variating quite a bit, but all in all, this is a guitar on the lighter side. This guitar is a tiny bit top heavy, 
but nothing where you would have to counterbalance with your arm. I think it's okay. On to the electronics components and everything here. The pickguard is a nice three-ply version and can be replaced with anything that's compatible with the American Fender Telecasters. These are also known as the eight screw versions. The electronic components, these are a bit difficult in my opinion. They are worse than on the last year's model. The switch really feels cheap and Yeah, it just doesn't have a good feel to it. The pots have the issue, at least one of them had a knob that was scratching the control plate. I can show you. You can fix this by pulling out the knob a tiny bit, but still it's making strange noises. So I'm calling this the squeaky mouse pot. And this also introduced another thing that, of course, all Telecasters have with single coils. Hum. Yeah. Depending on the angle your pickups have to the amplifier, you will hear it more or less. Something else that is quite common on this type of pick up with some kind of cap on it is it being microphonic and there are some things you can do against this and someone already asked me in the comments to show how you treat a pickup like that usually you use wax to fix this and we will do this in another video Things like the hum and pickups being microphonic are always to be expected in any kind of Telecaster or let's say even single coil guitar. These are construction problems all these pickups have unless they are really expensive, specially made, noiseless style pickups. And yeah, that's, that's not the... that's not the affinity's fault. I just wanted to point that out to any beginner out there. The pots rotate unevenly, as you can see. The center is not really in the middle of the axis. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal. This is more a cosmetic thing. Something that could be bothersome, which isn't the case in this guitar, or at least the three models I have seen, is when the jack is loose, but here it's really good. Here you can see the switch and the other components from the other side of the control plate and also it's visible that they have shielded the whole cavity. This is a new thing. The 2020 model didn't have any shielding inside but on the other hand it's not really well applied. We will have to get back to this and do it properly. To be honest, after I've received the first copy of this guitar and did the unboxing, I was very unsure whether to keep it at all or give it another try because shortly afterwards I had purchased a Harley Benton TE20 which is less than half the price of this guitar and it had an amazing build quality for the price. But this changed when I plugged this guitar into my amplifier because I think this is something where this Affinity series really shines. It's not something that will sound particularly good with a tiny practicing amp like I used in the unboxing, but with a real tube amp, I think it's, it's really a nice sounding guitar.
Okay, so what do you think of the sound? Did you like it? I have to say that I really liked it and opposed to the opinion I've read a number of times in reviews, I didn't feel that the neck pickup was really that muffled. I kind of liked the sound, it's more sweet, I, yeah, I liked it, but definitely let me know what you think. So these were a pretty high priority on my replacement list for this guitar and I'm not so sure if this still stands because I like them. So let me know what you think. Go to the comments and, and just uh, reach out to me because I really love all the comments and replying to all of them. Thanks. Time for the conclusion. It's a tough one. I think that this is a very interesting guitar when you look at the specs alone. I think there are certain things to it that are really good. As I said before, the hardware I think is, is decent for this price tag. On the contrary, I had build quality issues with two out of three copies I received and the last one was even checked by the store. So I think this is not a guitar you can just carelessly buy online and expect it to be perfect. So if you have access to a well-kept store and you can go there and try as many copies as you like. I think you've learned now what to watch out for or for any guitar, watch out for these things always. If you can make sure that the build quality of your particular copy is good, I think that this is an awesome guitar for its price. The sound is really nice, it plays well, and I think the color is beautiful. As from my side, I will keep this guitar and I think I will have a lot of fun playing it. The remaining minor issues I will fix and of course show you how to do that. And I think it's finally time for the magical peel off. Thank you very much for watching until the end and next week will be a video where we compare the sound of the three copies of this guitar. Bye!